All right, whenever you're ready, just write down the barrel. I'm Harrison Ford, and this is the timeline of my career. Oh, well, now you're going to give me readings? <laughs> I want to tell stories that elevate our lives, change us, give us experiences which make us more empathetic, more um, human. I am Harrison Ford. This is a timeline of my career. Well, all I knew about being an actor was that you had to either go to the East Coast or the West Coast to be a professional actor, and I was starting out after a season of summer stock in Williams Bay, Wisconsin, and we had already packed all of our belongings into the Volkswagen. My wife and I stood outside and flipped a coin uh, to see whether we would go east or west, and it came up east. And I'd been raised in Chicago, and I was sick and tired of the cold, and so I said, let's make it two out of three. And we did, and it came up west coast, so we drove out to uh, the west coast, and I became an actor. That's luck. <laughs> Bob Ellis? First film I ever did was Dead Heat on a Merry-Go-Round. I played a bellboy. Paging Mr. Ellis. Paging Mr. Ellis. Those are the entirety of my lines. No explanations required. You sure? Yes, sir. Fast ship. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Should I have? It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. I had done American Graffiti with George Lucas. George Lucas made it known that he was not interested in working with anybody that he'd worked with in American Graffiti, that he was looking for new faces. I was working on a elaborate portico entrance to Francis Ford Coppola's offices, working as a carpenter when George walked in with Richard Dreyfuss to begin the first of the interviews for Star Wars. Somehow that rang a bell with George and I became, eventually, Han Solo. The possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Star Wars was a big success, so I was happy to come back and play Han Solo again and again. But that was enough. But I thought that he had reached his potential, therefore could serve the story by dying. We're home. The manner of death was not an issue. I was very gratified to see uh, that other people were enthusiastic to have me back. I was happy to be there. I don't really have a favorite. It's just brick on a brick to, to build the story. It's not about the party. It's about what you're celebrating. It became clear that Tom Selleck, who had already been chosen to play the role, was going to be unavailable because of his commitment to do a television series. I got a call from George who said uh, that he would like me to read a script as quickly as possible and then get over to Steven Spielberg's house and uh, talk to Steven. And I read the script as quickly as I could. I saw a great opportunity uh, uh, in a fun movie and um, went to meet Stephen and um, apparently uh, satisfied. And the part was offered to me and I accepted. Small around, prepare to meet Kali in hell. that it was meant to be a series. And while I had not agreed to do three uh, Star Wars films, in the case of Indiana Jones, I f felt um, there was enough um, information to, uh, to allow me to agree to do uh, a number of those. Dad! Oh, Dad! Oh, Dad! Oh, head for the fireplace! Oh. Sean and I had a great time working together. Very different uh, one to the other. Our experiences and our lives are very different, but we had a great time working together. The guy's fun to be around. He takes pride in his work, and he cares a lot about uh, doing a good job. It was great fun to work with him. Stop, you're going to go off the club. That's the idea. Bad idea. Give it away, Bob. Trust me. Slow down. Ah! Ah! 
I, uh, I was very happy to see Karen Allen come back, and uh, I thought it was a, a, a natural extension of the relationship, and um, I was glad to marry her. No, I don't really have favorites. I really enjoyed uh, uh, each of the film and the different experiences that I had in each film and the people that I worked with. You're not a replicant. Go home, okay? No, really. I'm sorry. I got a visit on set, I believe, from Ridley, who told me the story and uh, asked if I was interested. I read the script. I was interested, so we made a deal. Well, I don't remember anything like Blade Runner up to that point. It's the character, the overall story, it's his storytelling skills, made it uh, an attractive offer. He reads. That's good. Me too. How much else to do around here at night anymore? I didn't expect Blade Runner to come back, but I was happy to do it. There's no difference whether you're working with CGI or or a reality, the job is still the same. To create a character and behavior that helps illustrate the story. It's all make-believe. Want a drink? We're just here for the day. Would you mind if I took your picture? Now, just stand still, please. Fix your hat a little bit. Lady, you take my picture with that thing. I'm going to rip your brazier off and strangle you with it. Got a script from Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was head of Paramount Studios. It was in the olden days when uh, things uh, moved fast on a handshake. Uh, he asked me if uh, I liked the script. I said, I liked the script. He said, is there someone you would be interested in working with as a director? And I said, yes, I thought I would be interested in working with Peter Weir. I'd seen uh, films that Peter had done, and Peter accepted the job. We had um, four weeks of, pro of pre-production. Peter went off to, to um, research the um, Amish and I went off to research the police. We came together, did some rewrites on the script, and shot the movie. I was surprised that I was nominated uh, for uh, uh, the Oscar. But the film uh, was um, very successful. Peter was also nominated as well. But we were uh, unable to attend as we were making another movie in Belize, that being Mosquito Coast. Wrong, wrong, wrong. There are people in New York that live on pet food and would kill you for a quarter. You don't dare take a walk for fear somebody will stick a knife in your ribs. Think about it. You stay home and they come in through the windows. Ten-year-old homicidal maniacs on every street corner. They go to school. <laughs> they go to school. A very interesting character. That's what we look for as actors, uh, departures, different uh, characters to play. That is the beauty of uh, having a career as an actor. You get to play different kinds of characters in different kinds of films, which appeal to different audiences. That's the fun of it. Well, I don't think you'd make the same film uh, exactly today. You'd make a different film from the same story, perhaps. You know what the biggest problem of the 20th century is, son? <laughs> You're not asking her jack man. Go on, get out of here. Haul ass, I haven't oh, got all I day. Go on my own time. You go now! Don't mess with me, man. I am an American, and I am crazy. It's an example of the kind of film that we used to make in the olden days with directors that were really important in the formation of a career for me. I didn't actually do it all myself. I got to work with uh, the Alan Pakulas, Sidney Pollack, Mike Nichols. Those kinds of films are as important to me on a human level as uh, uh, those more successful films, which I keep revisiting uh, in interview situations because they are the most successful films. But that's not what makes a life. That's not what makes a career. That's not what brings pleasure to the pursuit of something ineffable. My wife first! I promised myself that when I saw you, I would get to know you. You're the first woman I've seen in one of these damn things that dresses like a woman, not like a woman thinks a man would dress if he was a woman. Thank you, I guess. Mike Nichols, romantic comedy, great fun. Mike Nichols was a smart guy. There were a lot of directors that I worked for in the olden days. I'm looking for people to work with intellectually and emotionally. Uh, I'm looking for something different to what I've lately done. I'm looking for something new, something different, something challenging. That serves me. Uh, to help me choose projects. It was a very interesting time. No names, no business cards. 
Why, you don't know one thing, Savage. I know. I'm sure you do. Go ahead, play cool. I know. You killed her. You're the guy. Yeah, you're right. You're always right. Alan Pakula, sweet, generous man, uh, and a really good filmmaker. Great pleasure to make, uh, to work with him. The story came from a book written by Scott Turow, based on real life um, um, case. Scott Turow was a prosecutor in the, uh, in the Chicago area. It was a very interesting character to explore. Uh, he has an affair with a, um, a business associate, played by Greta Skaki, and he suffers uh, the consequences of uh, his infidelity in a, uh, <laughs> uh, in a dramatic way. I think it's a powerful emotional story, and I, I, I love making that one. I love working with Alan. I worked with him again on a movie called The Devil's Own with Brad Pitt, which I also think is a really good movie, although we had a real hard time making it. But Alan made a, I think, a finally made a really good movie out of it. What's the money for? I was thinking guns. I was thinking IRA. Devil's Own was a script that Brad Pitt had developed. It came to me to play uh, another another character. Brad and I had to come to agreement on a on a on a director for it, and we agreed on Alan, and uh, ended up making the movie. We didn't agree on everything, and we hammered it out, and we made peace uh, among ourselves. And it's a good guy. Tell SO13 you know who she is. Tell him her name. Give him her picture. Tell him that she poses as a rare book dealer and ask him to look for her. What do you mean? What do you do? What am I supposed to do with you, Jack? There are two films I did uh, uh, based on Tom Clancy books, both directed by Philip Noyce. Really good movies. I was really uh, pleased with them. Uh, what attracted me uh, to the character was that Tom Clancy had written the character with a political bias. I thought that we could tell the story with a, a little bit more emotional complication. We were intent on giving uh, Jack Ryan a slightly different personality or reality than, than Clancy did. We got a lot of access from CIA because of their relationship with Tom Clancy. We're talking about important things, uh, global power and manipulation of, of history. I thought it was really interesting to me, and I think those films are good movies. I am not after your job, Marty. I did do The Fugitive. Based on the, on the quality of the script, the potential for that character, I, I thought it was uh, ambitious. Well, I never considered myself to be an action film actor. There was action in the films that, uh, that I was involved in, but they weren't specifically fairly described as action films. I did Jack Ryan movies, which had action in them. Air Force One. Get off my plane. Was an action film. Donald Trump's favorite president. I'm not reminding you, I'm reminding him. Rather than just being based and, and founded on a belief in kinetic activity being sufficient uh, to build a, a movie around, they had a story, they had a plot, they had characters, they had conflict. So I didn't consider them action films. Object to you? Look at you. It's as though a lovely breeze has swept through this whole house. Even though the breeze comes from the general direction of the garage? It's the 90s, Sabrina. So they say. Sabrina was a remake of a movie that starred Humphrey Bogart and um, Audrey Hepburn. I made the choice when we did the film not to watch the original. I didn't want to make choices based on doing it like Humphrey Bogart did it, or not like Humphrey Bogart did it. I just didn't want to know, so I didn't actually take the opportunity to look at the, the original version. You can have it all back the way it was. But you gotta take it all. He's lying. He's screwing another woman in their life and about how easy we are to fool. Stop. Don't do that. 
I'm done with them. There's another uh, Sidney Pollack movie, powerful experience for me, working with Sidney again and um, the cast that he assembled. And I, I always uh, found it very interesting to work with a director more than one time. Uh, and in my career, I did two films with a lot of different directors. The second time, you always uh, find something something new, something different that exists because of the, the experience that you've had together already. Interesting personal experience and hopefully good movie. Yes. You killed her, didn't you? I did not. I didn't kill her. Jesus, Claire, listen to me. When I got here, she was already dead. She killed herself here in our house to destroy me. Bad guy. Bad, bad guy. Fun. Great fun. Michelle Pfeiffer. Bob Zemeckis directed it, and um, it was the first um, really bad guy that I played. Was that what drew you to it? Oh, yeah. I enjoy a good tale. Uh, and I'm not just looking for good guys to play. I'm, I'm interested in the humanity of characters that are not obviously good. It was my ambition. I wanted to take the success of more popular films and allow me to make uh, choices which would be less obvious, less uh, focused on the potential economic success of the film, but to play different kinds of characters and stretch people's sense of who I was and allow me to explore the full range of potential um, characters. I'm asking you to forgive me. Activate the system. The primary was never connected. It has to be activated locally. Go to mine and turn on the system. That was a very interesting experience. Catherine Bigelow directed it. We shot um, uh, some of it in Russia, a great deal of it uh, in Canada, in Newfoundland, exploring the lives of, uh, of Russian submariners based on a real life story, getting to know those people and what they've been through and uh, be part of the telling of that story, getting a chance to, to uh, work with Catherine Bigelow, who is so far, I think, the only woman director that I've worked with, it doesn't, and that seems weird to me. I like that movie. I like the sophistication of the storytelling in that movie very much. Do it myself. Can I just say one thing? That's our job. I know you think you're above it, and of course you were above it before you got fired. But now, you guess what? You're down in the muck with the rest of us, Mike. And yet I still have standards, unfortunately, for you. Suppose I don't have standards? Sure you do. When you got your pap smear on air, you wore a silk robe. Okay! Classy touch. Morning Glory was a romp about the news business. It was directed by Roger Michelle, and uh, I got to work with Diane Keaton, who was fabulous. I'd never met her before, yeah. Yeah, she was great. Really great. If you saw the behind-the-scenes footage and it looked like we were having a good time, it's probably because we were having a good time. That was real. Yeah, we had a good time. It was fun. Watch Mike Pomeroy before your morning dump. Well, what you do with your team is your decision, Herb. But my team's going to be in Philadelphia tomorrow with Robinson. And if we have to claim the game as a forfeit, so be it. That's 9 to 0. 42, Brian Helgel is a movie about Branch Rickey who brought Jackie Robinson, the first black baseball player, into uh, organized white baseball. Changed baseball, changed the culture of this country for the better. No, I was not a baseball fan. I didn't know much about baseball. I didn't know about the different that there was black baseball and white baseball. Of course, black baseball players were not being paid what white baseball players were being paid. This is a guy who, out of a conscience, and an understanding uh, changed history. It was a real pleasure to be part of the telling of that story. Do you think God likes baseball, Herb? It wasn't the gold, he didn't care about that, it was the mountains. He spent all day looking at maps and, and pictures of the mountains, dreaming about what was on the other side. Places no one had been. Wild places.
It was a challenge in Call of the Wild in getting the character more complex and, and potentially more emotionally involving than um, the way the character is presented in the book. John Thornton was facing domestic issues, if you will, that he had run away from in the context of his relationship with, uh, with Buck. The opportunity to, to see John Thornton as a, as a redemption of um, the experience that Buck had had with humanity was part of what I was uh, interested in exploring. Had you read the source material before you were pushed for the film? There's a book. <laughs> Well, I read it a long time ago, and then I read it recently, more than twice. The film was shot not in Alaska, but was shot in Santa Clarita, which is 24 miles from here. Uh, not cold, not the Yukon. We ended up in, in CGI territory, not just for the convenience of it, because all of the animals were computer generated. Much of the articulation of the dogs, the capacity to manipulate their performances, we would not have been able to do that without CGI. And at the same time, since we were shooting on a CGI platform, we could enhance the environment. And so we were able to excise the Santa Clarita of it to create, uh, in a very imaginative and powerful way, I think, the beauty and majesty of nature. I don't have any particular easily described uh, process when it comes to selecting what I'm going to do. I do have to have an emotional reaction uh, to the material. I've got to feel genuinely um, that I have experienced allows me to, to meet the challenges of the, of the uh, expression of that character. The experience I've had working with different directors, different actors, I've certainly learned more about the craft of acting. You never know how it's going to turn out, actually. Uh, I do remember that uh, when I was uh, leaving school and all of my friends were going off to, well, they, they were graduating, I was getting thrown out, but they, um, went on to professional careers after which they would retire, play golf, and die. And I, I was looking for some way um, uh, out of that. I wanted excitement. I wanted a challenge. I didn't want a real job, and I was lucky. This is Harrison Ford. This has been the timeline of my career so far. <laughs>